contraction. Right? So if I know how much blood is pumped per contraction, and I know how many contractions there are across a minute, then I can calculate Q. Right? Stroke volume is end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume. So if I have, and those great big long words are, should be slightly recognizable because we talked about diastole and systole on Friday. All right, so if this is my heart chamber, okay, then end diastolic volume is how much blood is in the chamber at the end of relaxation. So let's say we're nice and filled up. And okay. systolic volume is how much blood is left in the chamber at the end of contraction. So stroke volume is EDV minus SV. So this bit, what came out is stroke volume. Does that make sense? Right. So typically, cardiac output, so how much blood per minute at rest is around five liters per minute for men, somewhere around four and a half for women, just because their hearts are smaller. Okay. But that can increase to as much as 20 to 30 liters during exercise. So, Devon, hold your blood up. That's probably not a liter, probably 32, right? So that's not even quite a liter. So at rest, your, pump, your heart is pumping five and a half of those. And when you're running or biking or doing a lot of exercise, it could be as many as 22, 23, 24 bubbles per minute. Right? That's how much work your heart is doing. So that's why when you have heart disease, we see such a big impact on health because the amount of work the heart has to do in order for you to stay functional is a ton. Right? So as soon as it's even slightly um, uh, non-functioning, if there's just one little area of the heart that has got some damage, we see a big impact. Resting cardiac output then, one of the things that is a little tricky to get your head around initially. Okay? Resting cardiac output represents how much work you are doing. Okay? So, at rest is Ben doing more work than Sarah. Who says no? Yes. Who says yes? Everybody else is sitting on the fence. Aye. No, right? He's not fractionally because he's a little bit bigger and he's got more muscles. But your work rate when you're sitting down is minimal. Right? So at rest, Ben's will be a little bit more than Sarah's just because he's bigger but it wouldn't be any different to a sedentary person who was the same size as him. And if we um, normalized it to weight, we wouldn't see a difference between Sarah and Ben. Okay. So, resting cardiac output, if I am six foot tall and 150 pounds and sedentary, my resting heart rate, my sorry, resting cardiac output would be the same as if I'm six foot tall, 150 pounds, and active, because you're not doing any work. Where we start to see differences as soon as we start to train. Okay. So when I'm training, I need a lot more 
cardiac output during training, right? And what happens to my heart rate when I train at rest? Goes down, right? So at rest, this may be the same, whether I'm sedentary or I'm active, but how I get that is slightly different. All right, sorry, I don't have all the colors here. If i am got a lower heart rate because I'm an exerciser, but this has to stay the same, then I have to have a higher stroke volume. Right. This then, the fact that I've got a higher stroke volume, as we'll see in a minute when we start looking at exercising, that means that then when I exercise and my heart rate goes up, now I'm able to create a lot more blood flow to provide nutrients and oxygen to the muscles. All right, so if we do aerobic work regularly, then we see changes in this that lead to this higher stroke volume. So my end diastolic volume goes up. Okay. Partly because the heart gets, uh, the chamber of the heart gets a little larger. Partly because blood flow and blood pressure drop and so it's easier to move blood back to the heart. And so we get at the end of diastole, at the end of relaxation, we get more blood in the heart. And we also see changes in the amount of blood. The plasma volume goes up with training. All right, so when we get back to the blood information, we'll see the plasma volume goes up. So all the adaptations that we see when we train allow for there to be more blood in the heart at the end of the relaxation phase. Then, also we said that we see changes in the heart muscle, the heart muscle gets stronger, and so it's actually able to squeeze out a little bit more, and so now stroke volume increase. So it's a bit chicken and egg, which happens first, does heart rate drop and therefore stroke volume has to go up? Or does stroke volume go up and therefore heart rate comes down at rest? Probably this one. So for people who, not you guys, because you guys are not moderately trained, you're pretty highly trained, right? But for moderately trained, or untrained sedentary people, stroke volume goes up to around 40 to 50% of VO2 max. Right? So when we graph it, what we see when we start to exercise, VO2 max is a measure of intensity. All right? So stroke volume goes up and then plateaus. And heart rate has a linear relationship with intensity. So heart rate goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up until we hit 100% intensity. Okay. So if Q is the product of these two, then what we see with Q is it goes up, it goes up, it goes up, it goes up, all the way up to here, very steeply. And then because stroke volume plateaus, but heart rate keeps going, Q keeps going, but it goes at a less steep rate. So Q represents the body's ability to provide nutrients and oxygen to the body because it's how much blood is being provided to the body per minute. 
So we would need Q to go up when we're exercising. All right? And the harder we work, the more nutrients and things we need available. So heart rate increases up to maximal workload, linear relationship between heart rate and intensity. Right? So heart rate is a very good measure of intensity because of this linear relationship. Let's use So end diastolic volume can increase as much as 10% because of training. And we don't see the same kinds of adaptations if we do strength training. Right? We do get an e a drop, drop in the ESV, but we don't see this increase in the EDV. If I'm exercising and I'm training, we make the heart stronger when we're weightlifting. We say on Friday that the heart muscle is thicker for different reasons, whether I'm weightlifting or I'm running. If I'm weightlifting and I'm having to push blood out against a very high blood pressure, it makes the heart stronger. So we see a drop in end systolic volume but we don't get the similar increase in end diastolic volume. All right, I think I'm done, guys. <laughs> <laughs>